The international community continues to offer support to Ukraine as Russian forces intensify efforts in the east. Protesters in Sri Lanka show no sign of leaving the president's residence, saying they'll stay until he and the prime minister step down. A mass shooting in a bar near Johannesburg leaves 15 dead, with police still searching for the suspects at large. The Russian Defense Ministry released footage on Saturday of servicemen being awarded medals for what it described as acts of heroism in the ongoing war with Ukraine. The ceremony in the Luhansk region took place earlier in the week, but images have only just been revealed. Meanwhile, Ukrainian President Volodymyr Zelensky met with a delegation from France, including President of the French Senate, Gérard Lachey. <coughs> In just one day, Russia hit Mykolaiv, Kharkiv, Krivi Rig and the communities of the Zaporizhia region, he says. It hit precisely the residential sector, absolutely, deliberately, purposefully. Ordinary houses, civilian objects, people. There are victims, dead, wounded. Brutal strikes of Russian artillery in the Donbass do not stop for a single day. Slovyansk direction, Mahmoud, Avdivka. Such terrorist actions can really only be stopped with modern powerful weapons. People living in the small town of Druzhkivka, south of the eastern Ukrainian city of Kramatorsk, felt three suspected missile attacks which tore apart a supermarket shop front and left a huge crater in front of the store. The strike also damaged a residential area in the city's house of culture. And in Ukraine's second largest city, Kharkiv, a Russian rocket hit a two-story residential building, injuring six people. A U.S.-based military think tank says recent actions in Kharkiv suggest the Kremlin intends to annex part or all of that area. Protesters in Sri Lanka on Sunday showed no sign of leaving the home of President Gotabaya Rajapaksa, which they occupied on Saturday. They're saying they'll stay at the residences of the President and Prime Minister until both of them resign. Rajapaksa has said he'll stand down on Wednesday, but demonstrators are determined not to leave until that happens. This president and the prime minister sh should have uh, stepped down a long time ago. But the, uh, this is people's struggle. So I think we have about 90% victory. So let's wait till the 100% achieve. Prime Minister Ranil Wickremesinghe originally said he'd leave office once a new government is in place. But hours later, the Speaker of the Parliament said Rajapaksa would step down on Wednesday. But protesters are set for the long haul, distributing food and drink to the president's residence and occupying rooms and using the swimming pool. A mass shooting at a tavern in Johannesburg's Soweto township has killed 15 people and left others in critical condition. South African police say they are investigating speculation that a group of men arrived in a minibus taxi and opened fire shortly after midnight on Sunday. What we know is that the assailants, they just entered into that space while people were enjoying themselves and they shot randomly to them. Um, as to what is the motive, currently we don't know, but our detectives are hard at work. The armed men stormed the bar and opened fire. Speaking to reporters, the aunt of a survivor, Zama, says her niece was in the toilet when she heard the gunshots being fired. Mama. She says she was informed by her daughter that there had been a shooting at a bar in Soweto. Her niece, Zama, was there at the time and was fortunate not to be shot. The group of men used AK-47s to carry out the attack with police still on the look for the suspects. Last week, 21 teenagers were found dead in a bar in the city of East London, with many South Africans feeling that gun attacks are becoming regrettably normalised. Former Japanese Prime Minister Shinzo Abe's alleged killer has been transferred after being detained at a police station for two days. Police say the 41-year-old suspect said he had believed rumours that Abe was connected to a religious organisation that caused his family financial problems. He also told investigators he had attempted to make a bomb. Meanwhile, a handmade gun found at the scene was one of several confiscated from his apartment. 
But Abbey's death has raised security questions. A top police official has admitted that a possible security lapse allowed the assassin to get in close range of the Prime Minister in broad daylight. The head of NARA's police says, I believe it is undeniable that there were problems with the guarding and safety measures. The urgent matter is for us to conduct a thorough investigation to clarify what happened. The diehard politician has been praised by mourners and leaders for his knowledge and experience in international politics and for preventing the breakdown of US-Japanese relations. While the assassination has overshadowed Sunday's parliamentary election, the ruling Liberal Democratic Party were predicted to come out top as voters cast their ballots. Current Japanese Prime Minister Fumio Kishida, who leads the Conservative Party, denounced a barbaric attack on his former mentor, insisting on the importance of defending free and fair elections. After 17 years of candidate status, North Macedonia received an invitation to start negotiations with the European Union. But there are still many hurdles for the small country, including demands from Bulgaria, which is an EU member and has veto power. Bulgaria is demanding that North Macedonia recognize its Bulgarian minority and that it acknowledges its language has Bulgarian roots. Protesters responded to these demands with outrage. It should be rejected. I don't think it should be accepted. We are being blackmailed and we are simply not giving the same chance as the other countries like Serbia and Montenegro. It cannot be worse than this. The freaks accepted it. No negotiations with the Bulgarians. The protests, which have been going on for a week, escalated into violence, with police officers injured and several protesters arrested. Despite the violent outburst, the government believes North Macedonia should start membership negotiations. We understanding all the uh, concerns and emotions of the people, but we are trying to explain that uh, uh, this is about the strategic orientation of our country and that it is possible that we uh, get into the European Union as Macedonians with Macedonian language. One of the conditions in the negotiation framework for opening of the clusters is the inclusion of the Bulgarian minority in the constitution of North Macedonia, which requires a two-third majority in the assembly and which, in the current composition, cannot be secured without the votes of the ethnic Macedonian opposition parties. We clearly say that we will not uh, support uh, this proposal and changing of the constitution of a simple reason that uh, what is asked by, uh, from Macedonia by uh, this proposal and by Bulgaria is uh, going deep into the roots of the nation. As President Macron stated, North Macedonia is a historic crossroad to choose between the path of negotiations for EU membership, which are challenging for the national issues, or the path to unknown destinations offered by growing anti-EU political intentions. In Skopje for Euronews, Borian Jovanovski. The 56th edition of the Carlo V. Vari Film Festival has come to an end. The event is one of the world's oldest film festivals, and this year, more than 120,000 people watched its movies. Australian actor Jeffrey Rush won the Crystal Globe Award for Outstanding Contribution to World Cinema. The actor is playing Groucho Marx in the film to raise eyebrows. I'm uh, being offered a really challenging and uh, distinctive part, I think, to play Groucho Marx, who was a very famous American vaudevillian and film actor with his brothers, the Marx brothers, and then a radio star and then a television star. And it's about, it's not a biopic, it's not a biographical, it's about the last three years of his life. I describe it as a tragic comedy about mortality. Both Czech actor Bolek Polivka and Puerto Rican actor and director Benicio del Toro received the Festival President's Award for their contribution to the development of cinema. And this year's winning movie was the Canadian-Iranian film Summer with Hope. It's a film about the relationship between a young swimmer and his coach. It is such an honor because I love uh, Czech cinema and I love uh, Czech literature. That's how I'm inspired and you can imagine how important it is for me.